the famous chin and pressure of Julio Cesar Chavez. And now here comes Chavez. Against the extraordinary talents and quickness of Floyd Mayweather. Hey, but I was missing the middle of the hands, Peter. Oh, Floyd. Both fighters were dominating in their respective incredible eras. But what would have happened in an epic showdown between these two? Let's find out. Chavez, regarded as one of the greatest boxers of all time thanks to his rock solid chin, deadly combination punches, crippling and unrelenting offensive style, has the longest unbeaten streak in boxing history, going 13 years. 89 wins, 0 losses, and 1 draw until losing to Frankie Randall. Julio is a 5 time world champion at WBC Super Featherweight, WBA Lightweight, WBC Lightweight, WBC Super Lightweight, and IBF Junior Welterweight. With a professional record of 108 wins, 6 losses, and 2 draws, and 87 knockouts, he had a 74.8% knockout to fight ratio. On the other side, Floyd Mayweather Jr., the undefeated champ, won 15 major world championships, from super featherweight to light middleweight, including 3 ring magazine titles and 4 lineal championships, with 2 at welterweight. A superb boxer, whose mix of speed, power, and technical prowess placed him in the ranks of the top pound-for-pound -pound fighters in history. In addition to remaining undefeated over two decades, Mayweather Jr. was the top money-spinning fighter of his day, the wealthiest boxer in the world. When you get past the money, Floyd Mayweather and Julio Cesar Chavez had the potential to put on a fantastic fight during their heyday. We're talking about Julio before his silly son became famous, and Floyd before there was a junior to his name. We are talking when these guys were at their best, prime versus prime, peak form versus peak form, like under 130 to 140 pounds. Before switching to the welterweight class for his most well-known and lucrative phase in his career, Floyd was not only talented, but also completely dominant, frequently stopping or forcing opponents to give up. There is little to no difference from Julio Cesar Chavez. For example, when Floyd first met Diego Corrales, another undefeated young talent back in 2001, many people entered that fight believing Chico had an excellent chance of winning. Mayweather crushed him with a 50-0, 27 KO career record. Overall, from 1998 to 2001, Mayweather won 7 title fights at 130 pounds before switching to lightweight in 2002 with a record of 10-0. 74% of his stoppage victories occurred at this weight. Then there's Chavez. The Mexican hero went pro in 1980 and won his first world title in 1984 at 130 pounds, defeating Mario Martinez in 8 rounds. His second defense of the title in 1985 came against Floyd's uncle, Roger Mayweather. Chavez stopped him in the second round after losing the first. The two faced off again at 140 pounds, and Chavez stopped Roger after 10 rounds in 1989. In comparison to Mayweather's 50-0 record, Chavez notably held his record to 87-0 before his very controversial 1993 draw with Pernell Whitaker. Whitaker's left up. Academic now. He would have to take a It could be history in the making. Side, Mickey Van and Franz Marti. In a draw. And he was at 89 wins, 0 losses, and 1 draw until his first official defeat against Frankie Randall in 1994. Even after suffering his first professional defeat, Julio Cesar Chavez was a big gun in the boxing ring, a whirlwind of aggression and power. His fighting style was as distinctive as his name, a perfect example of relentless pressure and devastating offense. At the heart of Chavez's approach was an unshaking desire for forward destruction. He was a pressure fighter with excellence, a ceaseless tide that crashed against his opponents storm after storm. His stance, unusually square for a boxer, presented a larger target but also afforded him exceptional deadly movement. With his feet planted firmly, he could shift his weight rapidly, making him difficult to pin down. This unorthodox stance was supported by extraordinary head movement, a magnificent contrast to his squared up stance. He would slip punches with unusual ease, his head darting in and out of range like a cobra striking. But it was not merely head movement. Power was his currency, a deadly weapon made perfectly with surgical precision. His left hook, a piston-like punch, possessed just enough power to batter a ram. The right cross, a devastating counter was a knockout artist in its own right. Yet Chavez was more than just a slugger. His combinations, though less frequent than his power shots, were crisp and effective, designed to set up the big knockout punches. Beyond his physical attributes, Chavez possessed a mental strength that was almost supernatural. His chin, a fortress of defiance, absorbed punishment that would floor any man. He fought with beautiful recklessness, a willingness to engage that looked like madness. This courage, coupled with his immense skill, made him a nightmare for any opponent. 
opponents entered the ring with Chavez, not just facing any boxer, but an entire nation. The weight of expectation, the roar of the crowd, a burden few could bear. Could Floyd Mayweather, master of defensive counterpunching and ring generalship, be among the few? Floyd Mayweather, one of the greatest boxers of all time, did carry a unique and highly effective fighting style. At the core of Mayweather's style was his exceptional defensive IQ. His Philly shell defensive stance, hands high, protecting his head and body while maintaining a compact stance, allows him to deflect punches with his shoulders and forearms, while his head movement and footwork enable him to avoid power shots with remarkable consistency. Mayweather's defensive brilliance was complemented by his counterpunching ability. He possessed uncanny intelligence for anticipating his opponent's attacks and delivering precise counter blows. His counter left hook was specifically devastating, often catching opponents off guard as they committed to their own punches. Beyond his defensive and offensive skills, Mayweather was a master of the ring, with an exceptional understanding of distance and timing that allows him to control the pace of the fight. His ability to cut off the ring and manipulate angles gave him a significant advantage. Many criticized Mayweather's style for often being defensive and lacking in aggression, but it was undeniably effective. His defense allows him to avoid damage, land clean punches, control the tempo of the fight, and amass an undefeated record, and cement his legacy as one of the greatest boxers of all time, along with Julio Cesar Chavez. So, if these guys ever got into a showdown, it would represent two polar opposite ends of the boxing spectrum. Their contrasting styles would made for a fascinating fight. Julio, a relentless aggressor, a human hurricane who sought to overwhelm his opponents with constant pressure and devastating power punches. His squared stance, while unconventional, would allow him to generate tremendous force and make him difficult to pin down, a throwback to an era of boxing characterized by raw aggression and killer spirit. In sharp contrast, Floyd, a defensive master tactician, would use his speed, skill, and intelligence to outbox his opponents. His Philly shell defense and counterpunching ability would be unparalleled and would allow him to control the pace of the fight and minimize damage, representing the change in boxing that now emphasizes skill, precision, and ring generalship. Chavez's tireless pressure would have tested Mayweather's defensive intelligence, while Mayweather's counterpunching would have challenged Chavez's durability. Chavez's ability to cut off the ring and force opponents to exchanges would have been a significant advantage for Mayweather. However, Mayweather's exceptional footwork and head movement could have made it difficult for Chavez to land clean punches consistently. On the other hand, Mayweather's counterpunching could have been a major factor that might turn the tide in the fight. Chavez's aggressive style often left him vulnerable to counterattacks, and Mayweather's precision and timing could have exploited these openings. So, the early rounds would see Chavez, with his relentless pressure and aggressive style, undoubtedly start strong. His constant forward movement and powerful punches would force Mayweather to rely heavily on his defensive skills from the outset. The early rounds would likely be close, with Chavez landing some heavy blows, but Mayweather effectively using his defense and counterpunching to stay competitive. As the fight progresses, Mayweather's superior boxing skills would likely begin to take over. His ability to control the pace and distance would become increasingly evident. Chavez's relentless pressure would start to wane as he tires, while Mayweather's economy of movements would allow him to conserve energy. Mayweather's counter left hook, a weapon of terrible accuracy, could start to find a home as Chavez's guard begins to slip due to fatigue. By the championship rounds, Mayweather's dominance would likely be pronounced. Chavez, despite his heart and determination, would find it increasingly difficult to cope with Mayweather's speed, precision, and defensive mastery. Mayweather's ability to land clean punches while avoiding significant damage would give him a clear advantage on the scorecards. So here's our prediction. While Chavez was a formidable opponent with incredible heart and power, Mayweather's superior boxing skills, defensive prowess, and counterpunching ability would likely prove to be decisive factors in a hypothetical matchup. Mayweather's ability to dictate the pace of the fight and minimize damage would ultimately give him the edge. Chavez would no doubt storm forward, intent on breaking down Mayweather's defenses. But Mayweather, a cold calculated assassin, would have relied on his speed and skill and strained the tireless Chavez like never before. Unfortunately, the 16 year difference between Julio Cesar Chavez and Floyd Mayweather Jr. made it impossible for what could have been the greatest boxing matches of all time. If it ever happened, we think Mayweather would carry the day. But what do you think? Do you agree with us? Or do you think Chavez would prove too much for Floyd? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more.